welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Hannah Fernandez and you're watching SCORE TV. SCORE is a nonprofit organization that provides free business mentoring and other services to startups and established businesses across the United States. So whether you're a new entrepreneur or you've been in business for a long time, our SCORE mentors could offer you free business advice, mentoring, and other resources. To connect with us, you could go to chicago.score.org, or you could email us at info at scorechicago.org, or you could call us at 312-353-7724. Today we're going to talk about what the City of Chicago is doing to support small businesses and boost economic growth. With me today is Kenya Merritt, who is the Chief Small Business Officer of the City of Chicago. Kenya, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure and always it's great to see you. Um, being yes. a member of our business council, um, it's always great to connect and hear about the great things that you're doing with SCORE and even with your own business. Thank you so much and I appreciate you. So I know Kenya that the city of Chicago mm -hmm. plays an active role in helping small businesses grow and thrive. So can you mm -hmm. tell us more about those programs and initiatives? Sure. So earlier this year in Bronzeville, the mayor launched a series of small business reforms. Um, and what's so amazing is we had this business reform meeting that was filled with um, organizations like SCORE sure. and with Chambers of Commerce. And what we've done is we've taken everything that we've heard from business owners as well as from people like yourself and we rolled it into this business brief. And a part of that business brief includes several initiatives one is our license issuance clock. Mm -hmm. So people that are interested in having a business in Chicago are always concerned around how long does it take for us to get our license. People have this perspective that it takes such a long time, sure. but we wanted to demystify that that timeline. And so once the mayor releases business reforms in April in Bronzeville, we hit the ground running mm -hmm. with putting up what we call our license issuance clock. And what this effectively set does is it tells prospective business owners how long it will take for them to go through the process of getting their license. Okay. Um, and what we've seen is that most of our licenses are issued within a single day. Um, but also since wow. we've um, instituted the license issuance clock and it's on our website, we've noticed that licenses were issued 42% faster um, for the month of July specifically over last year. So we're seeing that our process and our efficiencies are working for entrepreneurs and we're truly making it easier for people to do business in Chicago. Sure. Another initiative that we launched, which I'm super excited about too, is for um, entrepreneurs that are thinking about starting their business, but don't necessarily like have that little bit of a mm -hmm. push to go ahead and get started or for folks that really need some savings. So what we've done is that we've issued, we've reduced our license, our most popular license, which is our limited business license, in half. It's a 50% reduction. So our cost for our two-year license, limited business license, was $250. Now it's only $125. Wow. And so since we've done that, um, we've noticed that we've had an increase of 9% um, over last year and the number of new licenses that were issued for the month of July. And we hope that that will continue to increase. Yes. So if you're on the fence about starting your business in Chicago um, and you feel that cost is a barrier, go to City Hall and get your license while it's half off now. Absolutely. The other initiative that I'd like to talk about is sidewalk cafes and this is for our restaurants um, that may have the desire to open mm -hmm. um, during the winter months and so that extra space that sidewalk cafes provide for business owners also means additional revenue, right? Now you can see more people than you would in your interior space. Um, and what we've noticed is that our winters in Chicago are temperamental. Um, some days it's warm, some days mm -hmm. it's super cold. Um, this past Last winter we had a lot of warm days especially in February and so personally for me I like dining outside and I totally wouldn't have oh, minded if some young guy would have wanted to take me out for Valentine's Day and for us to dine outside in February <laughs> because it was nice <laughs> um, so now restaurants now have the opportunity to do that mm -hmm. 
the third initiative, the last initiative, I'm sorry, which is the fourth, is pop-up permitting. And again, super excited about this one too, because this one is really tied to economic development and really supporting business corridors um, throughout Chicago. Um, and so we would be the first city um, in the nation to have this type of license. And so we introduced this legislation in July and it's up for full city council vote on tomorrow. Um, and what it will do is give more flexibility for entrepreneurs to test their ideas, to test their products, mm -hmm. um, including those that want to test like restaurant models. Never have this been done before where we have separated essentially an operator from an actual site. Um, mm -hmm. And so now we'll have the ability to license an operator and to license a site. So if you were a caterer and you were interested in um, going into the restaurant business, but you were a little bit concerned about what neighborhood works for you, mm -hmm. what type of menu works for you now, as a caterer, mm -hmm. you have the ability to test that um, through licensed sites throughout the city. And so we're excited about that. We're hoping that it will continue to grow the number of entre entrepreneurs that may feel like they're a barrier. Years, sure. because now they can start their business at a little bit of a lower cost they don't have to have the fear of entering into a long-term lease and no and having a fear of whether or not their business will sustain now they can come in and get a license for as short as five days um, or as wow. long as 90 days if they want to operate a full-scale restaurant to test their business model so we're excited about it hoping that it passes um, sure. City Council on tomorrow and if it does it will be effective December 1st that's awesome. Let's yeah. cross our fingers. Cross our fingers. We're hoping so. Tomorrow, exactly. Well, I, I have, I have a feeling it will, but. Go ahead. Um, you know, we're really excited. So um, for those that are interested in pop-ups, be on the lookout. We will be continuing to work with our partner organizations like SCORE Fantastic. as well as our Chambers of Commerce to make sure that the word is out and that people understand the licensing component, component mm -hmm. and that they have the tools and the resources and the technical assistance that they need um, to be able to come in and get the license and get to work. Fantastic. And yeah. you know we support you. Oh, always, always. You guys are such a great partner. It's a lot of exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah, super exciting. We're, mm -hmm. We've been super busy. Um, and so this pop-up permitting essentially will be the last of our legislative reforms that mm -hmm. were announced in April, but that doesn't mean that it stops after that, right? Sure. We continue to work to make sure that, again, that doing business in Chicago is easy for the entrepreneur and that they have the tools and the resources to become successful. Because one of the things that we know about small businesses is that they're the anchors uh, many times in our communities, right? And so yes. when you have a thriving business corridor, you have lower crime, you have a community that's more engaged. And so we want our small businesses to thrive. And whatever resources and tools that we can provide, we want to make sure that we're doing that. Well, thank you so much for doing yeah. that. Exciting yeah. stuff. I'm super excited. Super yeah. excited. Super busy, but very excited about the opportunities for this legislation to really change the landscape for entrepreneurs. Right. And um, the work never ends. So with so many initiatives and programs, what does your role as Chicago's chief small business officer entail? It's so funny. So I like to say that like anytime you put the word chief in front of a title, it sounds <laughs> like bigger than what it is. I consider myself first and foremost a public servant, right? So I work for the citizens of um, Chicago. And for me, my role um, has three core responsibilities. Mm -hmm. One, and that's being out in the community, listening to business owners, listening to organizations that support businesses to figure out like what are some of the challenges, what are some of the things that we're doing right, and what can we do as a city to help, right? right? Um, that's my main role. I spend mm -hmm. probably 90% of my time out in community throughout the entire city listening to people. The second part is just as important. Mm -hmm. It's taking all of that information and bringing it back and developing policy. Again, we just, you know, are rounding the curve with um, completing our initiatives that um, were launched um, in April, but developing policy mm -hmm. um, that addresses some of those challenges, but then also developing programs. And then the final um, portion, I think, of what you know, what I do that is just as equally as important is that you know we work with a host of partner organizations, chambers of commerce, business service organizations, foundations um, that continue to move the needle forward and making sure that businesses are supported mm -hmm. and that the landscape for small businesses in Chicago is 
is first and foremost number one and and um, a model for other cities sure so that's what I do the the condensed version of that in addition to that like if anybody has questions or calls um, I get emails all the time from business owners mm -hmm. around questions about doing business with the city or a licensing question um, willing to also point people into the right direction and making sure that um, they are connected and that they, that they have the answers to any questions that they may have. I love to hear that and Kenya is always very approachable and she's always always willing to help. I try to be. I try to be. So um, you know that it, it it, it makes my job that much easier when people are just like willing to just call and mm -hmm. email um, and not feel fearful because that's what I want to do. I want to hear like what are some of the questions, what are some of the challenges um, so that we can address them and hopefully fix them. Exactly. Yep. So Kenya, as a public servant and a leader, mm -hmm. what are some of the most important decisions you make as that business or community leader? <sighs> You know, that that's a difficult question, right? So again, I see myself as a public servant first, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't feel like there is one particular decision that I that's more important over the other. Um, earlier today I had someone ask a question like, Hey, I have like you know, I had a business in Spain and I want to do business here in Chicago mm -hmm. and she was just simply asking about just how do I get started. I'm also interested in the food truck, right? So her her question or me directing her is just as important as us making funding decisions around what do we do with, you know, our grant dollars, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, for me, anything that helps to support small business owners and, again, help us to push the needle forward with right. making things easier for entrepreneurs, it's, uh, it's just a daily decision. Daily decisions, sure. I would say, are, are equally important for me. Got it. Yep. And, um, you know, more and more you see across the city of Chicago, businesses are becoming more diverse. So uh -huh. what are some ways that the city of Chicago supports diverse entrepreneurs, but specifically women, minority, and veteran-owned businesses? Yeah, I mean, I love it. I love that, you know, Chicago is such a diverse city. Um, mm -hmm. I like to say that all of our neighborhoods and communities are like fingerprints, right? Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love it. Like you can go to other cities throughout the nation and even in other countries and mm -hmm. there is nothing like Chicago nothing. and the yes. diversity and the richness of all of the different cultures in the city. Um, and I absolutely love it. So I feel like every neighborhood has like its own distinct fingerprint mm -hmm. um, and its own different take on on the city which is absolutely amazing um, and with that being said I think that the city understands that and that we get that and we try to support that in a variety of ways mm -hmm. um, within BACP one of the ways that we do that is that we try again to make doing business easier mm -hmm. um, and so we have our small business center which um, we recently um, just renovated and just the look of it is totally different and it's intended to be open and inviting for entrepreneurs um, and look less bureaucratic, mm -hmm. um, right? Um, and so we have a team of business consultants that are available for entrepreneurs, people that are thinking about starting a business, people that already have a business. Um, they're more than welcome to come down to our small business center and meet with our business consultants and we will walk them through the process. Um, and so we, again, we try and make it easier for entrepreneurs. If they have questions, they have thoughts, like mm -hmm. they wake up one day and they're like, I want to be a baker. Um, before you get started and go out and run a space, come and meet with our business consultants um, and they will walk you through the process. And so I think that we're very intentional and deliberate about making sure that the way that we deliver services is in a way um, that is receptive to all different sure. cultures and all different people. Um, other ways that we support um, communities of color as well as women too is through our outreach and workshops. Um, so every Wednesday and Friday we have workshops at City Hall that are totally free. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm out giving presentations, one of the things that I tell people is when you're interested in starting a business, do not pay a consultant mm -hmm. um, to tell you, I can get you your license in like a day. Well, it only takes a day, right? right. Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. <laughs> um, if you come down and meet with our business consultants, they're free. And then also, if you have specific questions around the different components of running your business, there are organizations like SCORE um, that are part of our small sure. business center, um, women's and business too. and free women's business development mm -hmm. center, which is a great organization that helps women entrepreneurs. They're part of our small business center too. And then the law project, like there's free mm -hmm. legal services. Mm -hmm. um, and although people don't want to talk about it, their taxes, we do have um, a partnership with the IRS where they are part of our small business center too. Perfect. So we try and make all of these resources available free. Um, and then too, just getting back to our workshops that are on Wednesday and Friday, they're actually conducted by practic practitioners. Mm -hmm. So these are people that actually get paid for the work that they're doing for us, but they're providing it to us for free. Yes. So if people have questions around, around how do they market their business on social media, and for some people that's kind of taboo, like they've never mm -hmm. like opened up Instagram or Facebook, but now this is a great way to market your business. Well, we can help to demystify that through some of our workshops. And again, those are free. Um, the other component that we do to try and make sure that we're um, providing resources out to all communities is our expos. So we have five expos a year where we essentially pack up everybody, mm -hmm. including SCORE and yeah. our other partners, um, and we take you guys on the road with us. Um, yes. So we've had four already. We have our next one in October um, at Malcolm X. Um, and if people are interested in having a business, they can actually get their business license on site. They can get counseling from you right. guys on site, um, as well as some of our other partners and we're there to answer questions um, and then I'll talk a little bit about what some of our other departments are doing as far as support to um, communities of color as well as women-owned business mm -hmm. um, the Department of Planning and Development has great programs one is the Neighborhood Opportunities Fund okay. um, and so with all of the development that's happening in the Central District downtown mm -hmm. there is a fund that has been set up where um, those developers now um, have an opportunity to pay into a fund that supports businesses on the south and the west side and that's been going really well um, and another program is retail thrive zones and the goal of that program is um, to revitalize business corridors and specific mm -hmm. neighborhoods throughout the city and uh, primarily most of those corridors are in communities of color got it um, and then our partners which are also on the same floor as us on um, the department of procurement services mm -hmm. um, they do amazing work with supporting um, minority and women-owned con um, contractors um, and so of course they have their certification program but they also provide resources and support um, and tools for people that want to go through the process of being certified as well so I think the city has like whether oh, wherever what? you are in um, your entrepreneurial journey whether you're starting or you're established and you want to go through the contracting process mm -hmm. and you want to become certified and do business with other governmental organizations or you're somewhere in the middle, we have something to support you and we have the resources to help you out. And I love to hear that. And you made a great point that if you're an entrepreneur right now wanting to start or grow your business, you don't have to go through it alone. No. And I think that people make that mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, even if you feel like, you know, there are no entrepreneurs in your family mm -hmm. or in your immediate circle, there are a lot of entrepreneurs in Chicago and then there are people that support entrepreneurs Absolutely. and so it's important to um, connect with those folks because there will be ups and downs. Anyone that is a su successful entrepreneur will tell you that it's a long yes. journey and so those moments when it's down, it's important to have a mentor or mm -hmm. to ha just have folks that have gone through that process to support you and to encourage you um, and so you're absolutely right it's important to stay connected to others absolutely yep. so Kenya in what neighborhoods in the city are you seeing the most impact so far you know what I am not gonna get beat up after mm -hmm. I leave here so <laughs> <laughs> I will say that again, like all of the neighborhoods and communities in Chicago are very distinct mm -hmm. um, and different and amazing and beautiful in their own way. Yeah. Um, but just some of the neighborhoods that stand out, and I do not want any of my community partners to beat me up, but this is mm -hmm. just a few, and I may be forgetting sure. some. And we're just beginning. Yeah, and we're just yeah. beginning. Yeah. Um, so, you know. 
on the I'm from the west side, so of course for me, like I think that Austin is growing. Like when you look along mm -hmm. the Chicago Avenue corridor, um, there are some amazing businesses and some amazing work that's being done by organizations on the west side. Mm -hmm. Um, and then East Garfield Park is doing really well, um, as well. Yes. Um, on the south on the south side, I absolutely love Bronzeville. Mm -hmm. Um, Bronzeville has um a diverse set of businesses from art to culture to yeah. retail to restaurants um and that's becoming like the spot to hang out right it is yeah it is it, it is. really is um and then chatham along 75th street um recently they had this um initiative called dining on a five which is dining on 75th street i didn't get a chance to make it out but um have plans to meet someone for lunch mm -hmm. um in the next few weeks but chatham is doing amazing work um Let's see, far north, um, we were just at North River at this coffee bar called Surge. So mm -hmm. it's a coffee bar as well as a billiards. And the owners are absolutely lovely. Yeah. Um, and so there are some amazing things that's happening in North River. Um, Andersonville is always great. Logan Square is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, during our Shy Biz Blooms campaign, mm -hmm. we visited a restaurant called Cafe Con Leche. It was so it was so great. Um, but there are so many, so many great things that are happening all over the city. I know I'm forgetting some neighborhoods, mm -hmm. so please don't kill me, um, community partners. You're all great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. I love to mm -hmm. hear all the growth and prosperity all across the city. Yeah. So Kenya, you and I first connected when you and your team convened the Mayor Business Council. Yeah, so happy to have you on it. Yeah. So as a leader, how important is it to listen um, for feedback from business owners? So that's um, a major part of my role. So one of the ways, again, that we do that is that I'm out in a community talking with small business owners as well as with organizations. But the other way that we do it also is with our Small Business Council. Mm -hmm. um, and so our Small Business Council is comprised of diverse business owners across the city, not only diverse in ethnicity, but diverse in industry, diverse in the location of their businesses. Um, and we use you guys as sounding boards. So a lot of the initiatives that we um, launched as a part of the business brief, I would call like some of the mm -hmm. business owners, for example, of the sidewalk cafe, some of the restaurant owners that are part of the business council that say, hey, does this make sense? Sure. Um, will this help? Um, before we move forward and so it's important for us to know um, you know what's really happening from the business owners perspective rather than us creating legislation and policy and uh, programs in a bubble we want to make sure that it works for the business owner got it so tell me your story what inspires you to do this type of work you know it's so funny like you know and i know that it sounds so cliche but mm -hmm. i truly am a public servant it's so funny i, I tell the story that when i started undergrad mm -hmm. um and ever since i was a child i always wanted to be a pediatrician like at in my heart of hearts i mm -hmm. felt like I would be a doctor for the babies. Sure. Um, <laughs> and you're so compassionate. Right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to help all of the babies. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started college and I saw all of the science classes mm -hmm. that were required for me, and I was accepted pre-med, all of the science classes that were required for medical school, I was like, mm, I don't know if this is necessarily the path for me. Mm -hmm. And I decided to take a step back and to reevaluate. Re um, and I... In and I ended up um, majoring, taking a class in political science mm -hmm. um, and figured out, hey, I love this. And um, it just took me back to a time when my mom um, took me to a campaign for here in Washington. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, I, I think I, I like helping people from the public servant perspective. Sure. Um, and so I decided to uh, major in political science, long story short, um, ended up landing a job with the city. I've been there for 18 years, um, worked in various departments, building the capacity of organizations, um, and absolutely love what I do. I love helping people, um, and I love helping community. 
Fantastic. And so can you name a person who has a tremendous impact on you as a leader? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's always my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Like whenever anybody asks this question, it's my grandmother. And a shout out to Granny. Happy birthday, Granny. She turns 95 today. Wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Chi-Chi. Um, so she is a pillar of strength and grace and intellect. Like this woman is amazing. She raised seven kids, wow. um, migrated from the South. Um, and she's just amazing. She's just, she is what I aspire to be as yes. a woman. Yep. Fantastic. And as we wrap up, what advice or tips do you have for entrepreneurs and small businesses owners who want to start and grow a business in the city of Chicago? So what I have, the advice that I have for people that want to start a business, before you get started, make your way to City Hall, so our small business center. Don't pay for anything yet. We have the resources available to you for free. Mm -hmm. For people that already have their business and they may be struggling a little bit, don't give up. We have mm -hmm. resources and support for you as well. Yes. Well, Kenya, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. The time went by so quick. I know it did. Oh my exactly. God. And we have so many things to talk about. I know. We'll Sorry. have to do this yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. And to those of you watching right now, if you would like some free business mentoring or if you would like to become a SCORE mentor, we would love for you to connect with us. Again, our website is chicago.score.org. I'm Hannah Fernandez. Thank you so much again for watching, and we'll see you again next time on SCORE TV.